So, the Isle of Armor is finally out, and here is my review of it. So, the first part of the Sword and Shield expansion DLC, the Isle of Armor, was released a couple days ago. I think it was on Friday or Thursday. Um, so it's out, and here's my thoughts on it. Um, first of all, um, I'm probably gonna set this up into categories like I did for the uh, Sword and Shield review and like I'll be doing reviews in the future. So, um, first off, the, uh, we'll go with the story first. How about that? So the story is that, uh, well, the story's kind of bad in terms of fitting into the uh, act overall story. It's definitely set up so you can play it before you beat the champion. Um, because even if you've already beat the game, they still refer to Leon as the champion, which is an error if you've already beaten the game. Um, so the actual story is that, um, you basically, uh, take a cab to the Isle of Armor, and you get, you sign up for, you get forced to sign up for some dojo, and that's really it. Uh, a tourist is accidentally signed up for a dojo, the tourist being you, and uh, there's this rival along the way, and the rival depends on which version of the game you have. If you have sword, I don't know who it is. If you have shield, it's some psychic person, um, which is really stupid. I don't know, she's just very generic. Actually, it's a he, I think. Um, let's see. That's pretty much the entire story, so, um, you meet psychic person, uh, they take you to the dojo, and they're jealous of you because you're powerful or whatever. Um, then you have to go on trials. Uh, the first trial is to catch some, some slowpoke. Uh, second trial is getting some mushrooms, and third trial is, uh, battle, final battle with, uh, psychic person, or wh whatever the sh sword one is, which is also really easy. Um, I was able to pretty much blow through the entire story with my Santa Scorch. Um, it really wasn't hard. But, um, that's pretty much the story, and then after the battle, you get... Cub Fu, which is the ugliest thing I've ever seen, and there's more story after that, but that's where I stopped playing it, because I have enough material already for a proper review. That's the story. Um, it's not good. <laughs> Honestly, it really isn't. But the biggest crime of this entire thing is that this could have very easily been the post-game included in the game. It did not need to be a paid DLC. It could have very easily been with the rest of the game, and instead of the Sword Word and Shield Bird garbage we got, this could have very easily been the game's post-game. Sure, it wouldn't be great, but it'd still be better than what we got. This did not, I repeat, did not need to be a paid DLC. Alright, now with that out of the way, um... Some of the characters, I guess, you got a Psychic Lady or Psychic Man or whatever, and uh, a Sword Person. You got uh, Mustard, who's a uh, dude with some eyebrows or whatever. Um, yeah. Anyway, next category I'm going to go through is uh, the new stuff, obviously. So, of course, you have the new area. Which, uh, graphic-wise, is just as bad as the regular wild area. However, I will say that the Isle of Armor does have a better variety in the locations. While the wild area is basically just one giant plains area, the Isle of Armor does have plains. It has a Great Marsh ripoff, which is a swamp area. It has a forest, and it has several different caves, which is pretty cool, actually. So, the uh, variety's alright. What is not okay, however, is the variety with the new Pokemon. They really didn't put much variety in the first part of the expansion at all. Like, there are some returning Pokemon that are okay, like Waylord, uh, they put Rockruff in there, but a lot of the choices are just really weird. You got Clefkey, Trap, or not Trap Hinch, uh, 
Don Sparse, that's his name. Uh, Klefki Don Sparse got Sharpedo and a bunch of other things, but the variety in the new Pokemon is just not good. It really isn't good. Definitely not worth. Definitely not worth it. Um, and of course, um, you have to get a choice between a Kanto starter, not including Ch Charmander, because they already put him in the game for some stupid reason. So you get a choice between Bulbasaur and Squirtle, and I chose Bulbasaur because I'm a Bulba bro. Um, so yeah, you get another Kanto starter. <sighs> My god. Um... And I guess that's a good segue into the problems with the Isle of Armor. Um, there's a lot of problems. I already said the variety in the Pokemon is very lacking, but uh, now we get into some of my complaints. Um, well, not well. They are my complaints. Um, I have a bunch of screenshots on my Switch for review purposes. Uh, the Whale Lord. There's a static Whale Lord in the ocean. When you first arrive onto the Isle of Armor, it looks... Whale Lord is actually scaled properly in the overworld, but as soon as you go into a battle with it, it's smaller than you. Again, they did not fix Whale Lord at all. Oh, and I forgot, there's also this side quest where you can ca capture 150 Alolan Diglets or whatever. I don't know what the prize is for that. I don't really care. Um, of course, they added some new clothing, which actually there isn't very much, and what they did add is alright, I guess. Um, so they really didn't add much there either. They didn't even, they added three new hairstyles, and they're all trash. Um, let's see. Also, the game does not let up with the hand holding. The game holds your hand pretty much the whole time, at least until the part I played at, which is the part where you have to get Cubfu to like you. Because that's stupid and tedious and not necessary. The game ha holds your hand. You know exactly what to do at every point, And it's not challenging at all. Um, let's see. Some of the parts that were in the story. Glitches that I encountered. Well, not glitches. Just stupid garbage. First of all, the first trial, you have to catch three unusually fast Al or Galarian Slowpoke. Not bad, right? They are basically running around... And you have to try and catch them. Now, from I th I thought that you were going to have to go all over the island to find the Slowpoke. You know, one would be in the forest, maybe one in the mountains, and one in the plain area. No, they were all in the marsh. All three of them. And it wasn't hard to catch them at all. It was dumb, a wasted, a wasted potential. That's not the biggest sin with these Slowpokes. At first, of course, they're fast Slowpokes. You, so you think they'd be going fast, right? Well, upon closer inspection, guess what they did? They used a cloud of running smoke to hide the fact that the Slowpoke's animations are not even sped up. That's right, people. They didn't speed the Slowpoke's animations up. So while they're going 100 miles an hour around the plains, their slow walking animation is still playing, and it looks incredibly stupid and unpolished. They could have very easily sped up Slowpoke's walking animation to match the speed, but instead, they made it walk slow while it's traveling fast. This is inexcusable and should not be taken. Game Freak, you need to do better. Like I said, Game Freak should get better or sell the, sell the license. Of course, they're not going to, but it's in better hands if it, w if it was not in Game Freak's hands. And that's not it with the animations either. In the, I don't know the name, but in like a mountainous area, there's, uh, you can find Skarmory. One of the Skarmory I encountered was stuck in a T-Pose animation. It, so it, it followed me around in a T-Pose animation and up the stairs too, which was just stupid. It looked goofy and it was, it was a glitch. It was, it like, the Skarmory looked like they're T-Posing. But this one actually was. It wasn't flapping his wings. It didn't do any animations. It was literally a T-posing Skarmory. And it was the first one I encountered, too. Which is also inexcusable. Glitches like that should not happen in a game like this. Especially in paid content. Oh my goodness. Okay, so, um... Let's see what else. They brought back Pokemon Following. 
but they did it so badly and so horribly that it shouldn't even matter. And it really doesn't matter. They did it so badly that the Pokemon following should be non It's almost non-existent. Like, the Pokemon does follow you, but they follow you so far behind that it doesn't really even matter. And you you can't even interact like that with them. Like, at least Let's Go had, like, the speech bubbles to say, Oh, your Pokemon did this. Your Pokemon likes you. Blah, blah, blah. Your Pokemon found something. No, in this game, all you can do is interact with them, and they'll do their cry. That's it. There's no interaction. They follow you really far away, and a lot of the time... The ca they get in the way of the camera, and so the camera is messed up in that regard. And it's awful. It really is bad. It really is bad. And my friends encountered a bunch of other glitches. I can't exactly remember what they were, but they were really bad as well. Overall, the Isle of Armor is bad. It's not as... It's not terrible, but it is bad. Was it worth the money? No. It should have been included in the game already. And people who say that, oh, it's you should be grateful because they're not making you buy the game again. I don't care. This should have been the post game. This it, it's even structured like a post game. Like you know how like Sun and Moon's post game was? It's structured like that. It's a set of missions and you get new stuff. It should, there's no reason why this could not be the post-game, other than Game Freak being greedy and wanting your money. So, that's my review of the Isle of Armor. If I forgot anything, let me in the com let me know in the comments down below. Tell me what you think. Tell me I'm an idiot for thinking this. T I'll tell you you're an idiot for thinking what you believe, and it'll be a mutual hate ship. Alright? Okay. Alright, I'll see you in the next video, guys, and uh, the Isle of Armor sucks. Game Freak needs to let Pokemon go.